The number one question I get asked in the comments is, what do you use to get telemetry information on your videos? I'll answer that and explain some pitfalls I fell into before I got to a solution that I think works the best. Hello and welcome back to Roman with the Llama. Telemetry, how do I get it in my videos? Let me first explain why I wanted to put them on the videos. I, like some of you, if you're checking out my trail videos, like to look at a trail before I take a ride on it. But I felt the one thing that was lacking with all the videos I would research online before I hit a trail was telemetry. At what point do I pass that landmark? How many miles in do I make that turn? How much elevation changes are on this ride? You get the idea. I felt that information would be really important to the viewer as they watch my videos. So I knew from the get-go I wanted to put telemetry on my trail videos. I need to point out at this time, I'm not sponsored by any company that puts out the hardware or software I'm gonna to describe to you in this video. Everything I'm gonna be running you through, I purchased with my own money. There's no affiliation. I use a chesty mounted GoPro for the main camera of all my trail videos. And GoPros will track telemetry. The GoPro Quick App will display it, but only for one clip at a time. There's no way to combine multiple clips to get a total distance or a total ride. And the reason you need multiple clips is GoPro, like almost all action cameras, break long videos or long clips into separate files. A 20 mile ride can create between 15 and 20 clips, depending on the bit rate I'm recording at. So how do I get the data off of multiple clips to create one continuous track for the duration of the ride? So I found an After Effects template that will create gauges from GoPro telemetry at a website aptly named goprotelemetryextractor.com. This After Effects template uses MGJSON files, which are essentially data files that just track numbers over time. It's just what that number's tracking, altitude, speed, distance, direction, GPS location. So as a matter of plugging this MGJSON file into the After Effects template, and you can create all your gauges and arrange them how you want. How do you get an MGJSON file? The same website has a web app that you can load the footage into it. It'll read the telemetry data only and then give you the MGJSON file that you can then plug into After Effects. They had a free trial, so I thought I'd test it out. I strapped on the GoPro and did about a two mile test ride. And it came out perfect. I'm like, this is it, ready to go. The After Effects template, I believe at the time was $69, which was reasonable. The web application was free to use. So I bought the template and thought I was set. So now I was on to my first trail ride and I did this at Waterfall Glen. And the result I got, yeah, it wasn't so great. I assumed at the time because this trail is essentially a loop around the Argonne National Laboratory and its particle accelerator must, must be interfering with the GoPro signal. So I chalked it up to that. But a few days after that, I was tracking the main branch of the Illinois Prairie Path and came across this anomaly. So I did a little research online to find out why this was happening. And I learned that the GoPro's GPS sensor is on top of the camera. On my chesty mount, I wear it upside down. So essentially my sensor is pointing towards the ground and being chesty mounted, my body is blocking most of the satellite signals in the sky. Add trees to that and you can see it's getting little or no satellite signals for its tracking coverage. Only having one GoPro at the time, I had to find another way to track my rides. I turned to my iPhone for tracking with an app called JAS Tracker. This I could mount up on my handlebars a little bit further away from my body, get a better satellite signal. This program can export what's called a GPX file. And the website I was using, goprotelemetryextractor.com, could also make MGJSON files from GPX files. So I rewrote the main branch using my iPhone to track it and got much better results. But it did have a couple major flaws. It tracked its parameters over time, not distance. So if I was stopped for any reason, the gauges would continue to drift like I was still moving. 
This meant I would constantly have to trim and adjust the gauges in edit to keep them somewhat accurate. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so somewhat accurate wouldn't stand. And it was a very time consuming process to do. Because the phone was just giving me okay tracks and it had that distance problem, I looked for another solution to create GPX files. And I settled on getting a Garmin Edge 130 Plus. It tracks more satellites than an iPhone does and it has the ability to pause when you come to a stop. So it stops recording time and distance. So I figured my gauges would be more accurate with this. I took it out for a test ride at Springbrook Prairie and it worked flawlessly. It did, however, drift over long distances of time, but this was easily corrected in post-production. I was now close, but not yet perfect in my tracks. I found under heavy tree cover that the data file would still start guessing and drift a little bit. My speed gauge would wobble, and sometimes the compass would lag behind a change in direction. It was minor, and I was content to continue with this setup. But there was still one big drawback at this point, and that was the sheer amount of time it took to render out these gauges. For every hour of time I would be rendering, it would take over 24 hours to render the gauges out of After Effects if I rendered them as a group. And this was unacceptable. I needed my computer for work during the day. I, I couldn't tie up it or After Effects for that period of time. What I did to solve that was just render out one gauge at a time overnight. That would take five to six hours. That way I could still work during the day and then render at night. The only problem with that is it would take up to five days to get all my gauges together before I could even start putting the video together. But in 2021, as I was putting together episode one of my Colorado trip, both of those hurdles were solved. The first, accuracy, was kind of solved by happy accident. While on my Colorado road trip, I tracked an off-road trail in my truck. I had mounted my GoPro to the very top of the windshield. I used my Garmin Edge to track the ride. I thought that's what I was gonna be using and had it sitting on my dash. When I got back home and started creating the gauges for that video, the Garmin data was terrible. I think it was because of the extremely slow speeds that I was traveling on this off-road trail. The Garmin kept stopping and pausing and it was just a mess. And I was thinking I was gonna have to put that video up without any gauges at all, which really kind of bummed me out. But then I took a look at the GoPro footage because I did have the GPS on on the GoPro still. Created a file from that and bam, the gauges were spot on. I mean, just incredibly accurate, much more accurate than the Garmin ever was. So I realized a GoPro right side up with a clear view of the sky is easily the most accurate way to track a ride. For the render time problem, the developer came out with a new piece of software called Telemetry Overlay and it was a game changer. It's a very versatile program as well. It can use telemetry from GoPros, EJI, and can even import GPX files and sync it up to camera footage. This did, however, create a new need. Mounting my GoPro upside down on my chest for bike rides wasn't gonna create as good a data, so I needed a second GoPro. The 10 was just released, so I purchased it, and now I record my rides with two cameras. A chesty is my main view, and a second camera mounted to the very top of my helmet to track telemetry. And it gives a second POV type shot to add a little variety to the videos. Heavy tree cover and tall buildings still have a negative effect, but nothing like I was experiencing with my earlier videos. Now I just import the GoPro clips into the telemetry overlay program. After it optimizes the clips for playback and analyzes the data, I can custom place a huge selection of gauges over the screen. It will even save layouts, so I can repeat the same setup for a consistent look. I also have the option to export the gauges with footage in various formats, as well as export just the gauges with an alpha channel, so I can overlay them in my editing program. I do it that way because it gives me more flexibility to add shots underneath the gauges from other cameras, and it allows me more flexibility color correcting the footage uh, in different lighting situations. So I can keep a more consistent look. I can play with the footage separate from the gauges. All this while keeping the telemetry consistent and for the most part, really accurate. 
And as for the render time, I can output an entire gauge layout overnight for up to a two hour ride. So as you can see, with its accuracy and speed, I am a huge fan of this telemetry overlay program. Well, I hope that answers the biggest question I've received on this channel. And if you're interested in this software, I'll leave a link in the description below. If there's something you're curious about that I didn't cover in this video, please leave a question in the comments and I'll answer it as best as I can. Until next time, keep biking, keep hiking, keep wheeling, and keep roaming with the llama.